Today we're going to make a cross fader from scratch. This is an A3144 Hall sensor, and uh, it is a Hall switch, which means that it just turns on and off. It has a, basically a digital output, either on or off. And uh, pin one on the left goes to uh, five volts. Pin two uh, goes to ground, and pin three is the output. So let's see how we can put this circuit together. So now we have <coughs> the whole sensor. Uh, pin one is to power, uh, to VCC, five volts. Pin two is to ground, and the yellow wire is the oscilloscope probe. And uh, basically I have a 100K resistor uh, as a pull-up resistor um, between pin three and um, pin one, which is going to VCC, five volts. And um, as you can see on the oscilloscope, it's reading five volts. Um, that is, uh, the pull-up resistor in action. So now I have here a uh, magnet that's going, uh, the north pole I think is facing out. It's a, it's magnetically attached to a screw here. And um, as I put this close to the, um, oh, this is, turns out it's the south pole. If I put it from the opposite side, if I put it from the opposite side, it goes down. So let's reverse the magnet and do it right. So now we have uh, the hall sensor and, or the hall switch, and here's the, the magnet. Uh, I have the north pole on the magnet now. And uh, let's see what happens to the oscilloscope uh, reading, which is currently reading at the high level, 4.5 volts. And as I bring this closer to the mag, uh, to the hole sensor, the magnet, the north pole of it, boom, it drops. Away, drops. Okay, let's see what we could do with this. So now, in order to visualize uh, this. I've put a um, 1K resistor going from VCC here um, to the um, to the positive lead of a um, LED light, and the LED, the negative lead is going to the output of the hole sensor. And so now, instead of uh, using an oscilloscope to visualize this, I'm going to put the hole sensor magnet close to it as I get close to it it lights up let's do it better there we go and it's a switch it's either on or off and it basically goes to ground when uh, the magnet is near So now let's say we had uh, something spinning, a spinning motor uh, anemometer like I've built before, and we have a magnet attached to the rotator shaft. And uh, if we wanted to use this to count the rotations per minute or the frequency of rotation, we could do that. We just, and uh, the, this output can go in to a counter because it's very digital. Every time I pass. So now let's see what we could do this with this with an analog circuit. This is a J310 JFET. And uh, basically uh, we're going to use this to form an, an audio uh, muting circuit. And so it, this is a JFET. And so 
pin one here is the drain or the input. We're going to put an audio signal into the input. Um, pin two is the um, source or the output. And this is usually connected to ground, but this is basically where the output signal is going to go. And the gate that controls the JFET turning on and off is pin three. So uh, let's see how we can integrate that with the hall sensor uh, to make a little audio muting circuit. So now I have an audio signal coming through from this white wire going from uh, an old phone jack um, was ready to play music. And that's going into the drain of the JFET through the capacitor. Um, and when you turn the signal on, you could see, uh, the audio signal playing. Uh, the output is coming from the source through another capacitor and it's going into the yellow oscilloscope probe and you could see the audio signal there. Now we're going to take these two large resistors. I think they're both 330, uh, K resistors and you put one from five volts to drain and one um, from 5 volts to the source. And this adds 5 volts of DC bias uh, to the circuit, uh, to the audio signal. And this is at the drain and at the source. And um, just have to adjust the resistor there. And let's put the other one in. Now, as you could see, uh, we didn't do anything with the gate. The gate is still connected to ground through the green wire. We just increased the voltage of the source and the drain uh, with adding a DC offset of 5 volts. And that makes the um, gate to source voltage negative. And when that happens, you see the JFET turns off and essentially has a negative gate to source. When I remove the ground connection, the signal comes back through a natural leak, um, and uh, when I put the ground back in, uh, there you see the signal completely muted. And so that's how we're going to activate the JFET to turn off. So now I have an audio signal going in to the JFET through a capacitor. What I also have is a large resistor. Um, biasing the signal, giving a DC bias to 5 volts. And also I have the output being DC bias to 5 volts through the source. Now, in order to bring it back down the ground, I have the large capacitor here at the end, and the oscilloscope probe is going to that output. Um, and that's the oscilloscope probe. The gate of the JFET is connected through a diode in reverse bias to the output of the hall sensor. And so now, if you look at the signal, you have a 1.5 volt peak-to-peak um, -peak signal that's coming through. So now when I apply the magnet to the JFET, watch what happens to the signal. Boom. Goes down to nothing. And every time the light lights up, It mutes the signal. That's pretty good muting circuit. And that's using a JFET in series mode with the with the audio. And the way this works is 
the way the JFET works is you have to apply a negative voltage to the gate in relation to the source. So since we're one way is to apply negative voltage to the gate, but since we're using zero and five volts here, the easier way of doing it is to apply five volt voltage to the gate, to the source rather, or to the to the source, and therefore the gate to source voltage, the gate voltage relative to the source is negative five volts. So in this way, when the output of the Hall sensor um, is normally high, it's pulled high by this resistor. When uh, when you activate the Hall sensor, it gets pulled to ground, and that's what activates this LED. When it gets pulled to ground, uh, you can never get five volts here going to the gate because uh, of this um, diode in reverse bias order, but some leakage will apply, and so that's why the signal gets through. But when you ground this, this becomes a solid negative in relation to the source voltage. Um, and so you have negative five volts and it shuts off the JFET and it doesn't conduct or doesn't transmit the signal. So once again, let's do it. Now let's see what it sounds like. Listen to it. Now let's apply that to our little crossfader circuit. So now I took basically a paper clip clamp. Um, and put it on a smooth riding uh, wire frame in order to make a very smooth, easy to handle crossfader very quickly. Uh, not the very resistive type of linear potentiometer that I conventionally used. And, you know, using some makeshifting uh, materials, I made it happen here. It's not pretty, but it seems to work. Now let's take it off the breadboard. Here's a sound that's going through in the input cable. And let's try to turn it off with the hall sensor. Unique circuit. All right, that works. So here's the crossfader in action. The magnet is right there. Here's all the circuitry with the hall sensor right here at the top. There's a very smooth crossfader. Doesn't look pretty, but I like to make it pretty. But like I said, this is just a proof of concept. It's a very sort of smooth one. So if I want to smooth traveling, not unlike a potentiometer. The magnet stays in that position, and that's the off position. So let's test it out. Here's the final design. Thanks for watching.